This is the new Kia Sorento and it's a little bit like the Fast and Furious star Sung Kang because while it can trace its roots back to South Korea, it was actually born and bred in Georgia, United States of America. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing as I'll explain in this video as I talk you around the exterior. The interior, see how practical it is, take it for a drive and of course launch it, see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way, you won't miss a single review. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video with a car wow stick of truth to uncover some lies because look, see those cutouts there and this design element at the lower part of the bumper? Clearly supposed to be exhaust, but oh no, they're not. They don't lead anywhere. And these air breathers at the side as well. They're fake, they're just a design treatment. And if you look at the way the lights stick out from the bodywork and a vertical, there's something very American-y about the look of this car because it kind of is a bit toy-like, but obviously a big, chunky SUV. Moving around the side, you start off on the entry-level car with 17-inch alloy wheels, which are going to be too small. These 19s look small in their own right, but they're actually the largest wheel you can get on this car. It's quite a big, bulky machine. You get roof bars as standard, you get chrome surround for the windows as standard. But as you move up the range, you go from body colour to part chrome door handles. Ooh, it looks quite good from the side though. Moving around, I think the front of this car is the best angle. Really like the look of it from here. The top two specification models get a gloss effect of the black trim on the grille. They also get high specification headlights, though all versions do get LEDs as standard. It's a good looking car. And the air breathers here at the front are real, unlike the ones at the back. Now the Kia Sorento, it starts from just over £40,000. Though you can save an average of just over £1,800 off one through car wow. So if you're thinking about buying a new car, click on the pop out banner up there from the link in the description below to go to car wow. Alternatively, at a later date, just simply Google wow me car wow and we will wow you. You can even sell your old car through car wow and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it. Now you might be thinking that this Kia Sorento is a little bit expensive when you compare it to its competitors such as the Peugeot 5008 and the Skoda Kodiak, but it does feel more substantial, especially here on the inside. I like the design of the dash, the way it's like multi-layered. Look at this texture you get on here as well, and here on the doors, which actually illuminates with ambient lighting when it's dark. The materials up here, squidgy, soft, expensive feeling, as on the dash with this stitching like that, like this here, like the the stitching on the door. I mean, I should point out that this is the top of the range car, so we've got the leather seats and everything. You know, this quality is getting on for like premium German stuff until you go a little bit lower down. Also, when you look at the center console, these kind of silver plasticky bits and here as well are just a bit American y. And by that, I mean a little bit cheap. I do like this though, the gear selector, rather than a big non thing to hold. It's a simple dial. I also like this, look, the climate control buttons are separate from the infotainment system so you can control them more easily when you're driving rather than have to dive through menus. Speaking of which, the infotainment system itself is pretty decent. This model has the upgraded screen which you get on the top two specification versions. It has 10 inches and you can shortcut through the different settings like that. The graphics are reasonably sharp. It is a touch laggy at times, but it's not really worse than the majority of manufacturers. Moving on to the digital driver's display. Oh, this car has so many beeps and bongs. So the information on there is pretty detailed and you can cycle through it using these buttons on the steering wheel and the display itself is nice and clear. I've also got a heads up display on this range topping version, which is really good. I love a heads up display. One thing I want to show you about this car, it plays a little tune when you turn it off. What's that all about? Do you know, rather than having things like that, I would rather the car had wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Instead, you have to connect them via wires down here. And the wires themselves, there's no USB-C, it's all old-fashioned USB. You do have on this particular version I've got here, wireless charging for your mobile phone though, and the storage is pretty decent. So the glove box is only okay, at least it's lined with felt so things don't rattle around in there. But there's a massive storage area here underneath the armrest and you get a little tray as well to separate some stuff out. You've got some cup holders here which will take larger bottles. What's not so good though, the door bin shape. It's not ideal, so I can fit that in there but it's a bit wedged. So it's sometimes hard to get out when you're driving. God, I've mentioned this though, look. Woohoo! Massive vanity mirrors. That's probably something to do with the Americans from the big heads. I'll tell you what, it's definitely to do with the Americans. The seats, they seem rather large. Like when you're going around corners, you flop about them a bit because they just seem a bit wider than they need to be for Europeans. Seating position though is 
fine. And look at this. You can really lift at the driver's seat. So if you're small, you can still drive this big car and seat over the bonnet. So it goes really high. Obviously, full electric seats on this range-stopping version. There's an okay amount of adjustment in the steering wheel. It's not stellar, but it's good enough. You know what? It's pretty good in here. Quite like it. Here in the middle row of the Kia Sorento, there is lots of room. Look, loads of knee room. Headroom. It's okay. I do think a Skoda Kodiak has a bit more headroom. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. But you can create more headroom by reclining the seats. That's better now. And I tell you what, this car is wide, so you can fit three adults across this middle row, no problem at all. Helps that this middle seat is nice and wide, so the person in the middle doesn't feel uncomfortable, and the floor is pretty much completely flat, so there's plenty of room for everyone's feet. There are some Americanisms in the back of this car. You see, there's lots of connections for everybody's mobile devices. Look, we have USB there, USB there. We have another USB here, 12 volts of charge in there. You can actually move this front passenger seat forward and backwards electrically on this particular model. If you need to create more room, that's good. And then there's all the storage areas. So you've got a net here, you've got a pocket here. You've got not only door bins there, but also an extra cup holder here. That's good. And the windows are nice and large and they go all the way down, which is good for kids if they want to just open the window and have a look out. Speaking of kids, if you've got really small kids and you need to carry a baby seat, it's dead easy. The back doors open nice and wide. You can get those bulky rear facing seats in no problem at all. The Isofix are really easy to get to as well. So you can lock it into place, dead simple. And because it's so roomy back here, you don't have to move the front passenger seat forward at all. And in fact, you can have it a long way back and still fit a rear facing seat. Now I'm gonna jump into the rearmost row because here's another thing I like about this car. Look, if I press this button here, it moves the seat out of the way. That is good. I'm actually gonna move this other one out of the way so you can see what's going on in the rear when I pull this seat back. So let me just pull this back, up, pop it into place. And you can see knee room is actually all right. Yes, I do sit quite low to the ground. So my knees are quite high up. So it's not the most comfortable position in the world, but there is just about enough headroom for me and I could do a short journey in here. Kids will be absolutely fine. And I like the fact that look, there's more USBs back here and you can even control the climate. Hmm. Not too bad at all, really. Now let's check out the Sorrento's boot. So with seven seats in place, the capacity is 187 litres, which is actually about average for a seven seat SUV. And look, you can just about fit a suitcase in there, maybe a soft bag as well. Take that, it's easy to do. There's no load lip to lift things over. And when you go into five seat mode, look, just by folding these seats down, which is dead easy. Nice, useful square shape. 616 litres, though that is over 100 litres less than the boot capacity on the Peugeot 5008. And click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to watch my video review of that car. Now, if you want to fold down the middle row seats, I'll just press these buttons here. Don't have to wander around or mess about, it's dead simple. And then you have a flat low bay, which is good when you want to load the car up and just slide things like that to the front, oh, that's good. Other features I like, you've got a 12 volt socket back here, you've got these neat little holders for the rear seat belt so they don't get in the way. You've got some tie down points. What's not so good though, is that with this plug-in hybrid version, the battery pack does eat into the boot space ever so slightly. It's only about five, 10, 15 liters or so. Nothing significant, but it is the area underneath the false floor. And that is exactly the place where you'd want to store the big bulky plugs for the hybrid system. Also, it means that you can't fit this low cover under there on the plug-in hybrid. Look, it won't fit because of this. Otherwise, it would do on the normal hybrid or the diesel version. And that brings me to five annoying things about this car. It's great that the Sorento gets adaptive cruise control. However, the system itself isn't particularly flawless. For instance, it uses a radar to keep you a safe distance from the car in front, but it's not consistent. It's constantly like slowing and accelerating ever so slightly. You know, a bit like when you get one of those annoying taxi drivers on the way back from the airport and they're constantly on and off the throttle and you sort of feel a bit sick. Then there's a lane keeping assist, which generally is really good and hooks you up to the center of the lane and does the steering for you. However, when I used it on a twisty road and there's suddenly a break in the white lines in the center of the road for turning on the right, the car suddenly wanted to go right and I had to wrestle with it. It's a bit scary. It was a bit like having a big, powerful dog on a lead. Then it suddenly sees a bitch on heat and it just goes, oh, I'm going that way. Yes, I've always wanted to use the word bitch in a video without it being swearing. Dick. I hate it when some car manufacturers do this. Look, the car is unlocked yet. The fuel filler cap is still locked. But bizarrely, 
you can get into the charging port. That is locked or unlocked, whether the car is locked or unlocked. Oh no, on this key, if you want to unlock the fuel filler cap, you have to press this button in the cabin. And now I can go back round and open it. Why the inconsistency? I've noticed that when you're driving long distance in this car, it's quite comfy to just sit like this. Apart from the fact that you end up then just resting your knee against this hard plastic bit at the centre console, and it actually just rubs against that side protrusion on your leg up here. After all, it, it just hurts. You might think that the boot release is up here. So if you've got another car, you're constantly going there and going, ah, actually it's all the way down here. Now you might learn the exact location of it after a while, but what you won't get over is the fact that by being placed so low, this part of the car does get covered in road grime, especially in the winter. And then when you open the boot like this, you just get crap all over your ends. Yeah. If you want to turn off the lane departure warning, it's an absolute faff. So you have to go into this menu here, press that, press that. Then you have to scan down to the one you want, lane safety off, then hit that button there. That's really annoying, especially as the car resets to the lane safety being on once you restart it. Because you're there on a twisty road line and it's beeping away because you're occasionally clicking the white lines, as you do. It's going, nah, 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 you're not being safe. So you want to turn it off. And rather than just being able to turn it off quickly with a button on the steering wheel, you have to go through all that menu stuff. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about the Kia Sorento. You can get the Sorento with a remote control function, which is really handy if some annoying sod parked so close to you that you can't get into the blooming driver's door. What you have to do is make sure the car's locked, press this button to activate it, there we go, and then this other button to make it come forward. Come on, come on, come forward, let me get in. Come on, you can do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Come on, further forward. That's it, come on. There, that's the, you see. Now I can get in. Brilliant. Ah. Kia lets you customise some of the buttons on the infotainment system. For instance, you can customise this button up here to do different things. You can customise the mode button on the steering wheel to do different things. And you can even customise the two knobs here to either switch to have the volume on this side and the tune on that side or vice versa. The definition of the rear view camera that you get on the Kia Sorento is very high quality. And on the top of the range car, you have surround view cameras with a bird's eye view so you can see all around you. But the best thing is, is that when you're driving along and you hit the indicator, the car uses that side camera to show you what's in your blind spot. The rearmost seats in this car have ice fix angle points, which is handy for those child booster seats. Hmm, clever. The Sorento has a switchable terrain system with various off-road settings, which is handy if you're driving up a mountain, or like me, making a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> all Sorentos are all-wheel drive and have an automatic gearbox, but there are three different flavours. For instance, there's the 2.2 litre diesel with 202 horsepower, or there's a 1.6 litre turbo petrol engine mated to an electric motor for the normal hybrid. That puts out 230 horsepower, but then there's this, plug-in hybrid version which has a 14 kilowatt hour battery which is supposedly good for 35 miles of electric power alone and you get more performance it has 265 horsepower we'll see just how quick it is in a moment when i launch it but before i do i'm gonna let you know which is my favorite engine and trim combination of kia sorento by configuring it using carwow you'll also be able to see exactly what saving is available if you click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below Right, let's see what this Kia Sorento is like to drive in town. So I'm purposely seeking out potholes and bumps to check the suspension. And do you know what? It is a little bit on the firm side. When you hit a pothole, you get like a clunking sound. And on an even surfaces, the body tends to just like fidget a little bit more than I'd like. Because this feels like a premium car, but really doesn't go over bumps like a premium car. If you want that, you need something like a Mercedes GLE. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below, you can see my review of that car. Now, I'm just going to test the turning circle. It's 11.5 metres. I'm going to see if I can get and do a U-turn in this space here. Can I make it round? 11.5 metres is about par for the course for this kind of seven-seat SUV. And yes, it is reasonably manoeuvrable. I'll tell you what else is good. I've got big door mirrors, which really does help 
when I'm trying to see out. There's not many blind spots. They're not bad in this car, even at the very back. And that does help when you're pulling out of junctions and doing silly things like I just did. The steering is nice and light as well, which really does help. With this hybrid version, you can just poodle around on electric power alone when you're in town if you want it completely silent. But when you have it in hybrid mode or for the petrol model, it's fairly quiet. Another thing I like is the fact that the brakes are quite progressive. Sometimes when you've got a hybrid and you've got the charging effect as you slow down on the brakes, it can feel a bit jerky, but not here. So this is one of the things about a larger vehicle like this. The size of it does make it harder for other vehicles to get past, especially buses when you're in tight spaces. Now I'm gonna see if I can park this car. Rock it into reverse. Having the surround view cameras really does help here. Makes it so easy. Great visibility good assistant systems, does the job nicely. Despite its size, it's quite easy to drive in town. Now let's see what this Kia Sorento is like on faster roads such as motorways and dual carriageways. So when you travel at speed, it's reasonably quiet. You do get a little bit of wind noise from here and a very slight amount of road noise, but it's not intrusive at all. It's fairly relaxing. The suspension gets better as you go quicker as well. It deals with undulations quite well, so the car feels planted. Now the high specification cars actually have self-leveling suspension at the rear, which does help with that. I'm averaging in this plug-in hybrid 36.9 miles per gallon. Now, if you're just driving around town and stuff like that, the plug-in hybrid is good because it can just run in electric power alone and you see your economy figures like being like 900, 600 miles per gallon, sometimes 300 miles per gallon. But when you do longer journeys, the petrol motor is doing most of the work and then the economy falls. In fact, when you're just driving this on the motorway, it'll do about like 35 to 36 miles per gallon. And if that's the case, you're better off with the diesel version of this car. In fact, if you want to tow, you want the diesel version of this car because it can tow two and a half tons. This plug-in hybrid can only tow one and a half tons. So be warned if you have a horse or a caravan. Now let's find out what this Kia Sorento is like to drive on a twisty country road. So I'm gonna put it into sports mode. And what that does is add a bit of weight to the steering and it sharpens the throttle response. And through the bends, it actually does a good job. It doesn't lean too much when you go around a corner, but if you get too carried away, the front wheels will start to run out of ideas and the car will push wide. But it does so in a predictable and safe way. One thing to note though, is the engine. So if you have this plug-in hybrid version, you've got a bit of extra punch when you come out of a turn because that electric motor provides a bit more instant response. So floor it and off we go. But you probably notice that there. When you accelerate hard in this car, you can tell it's got a small petrol engine doing most of the work because it makes quite a lot of noise. Another thing to note is that if you have the plug-in hybrid version, it's about 120 kilos heavier than the normal hybrid or the diesel. And as a result, it just feels a little bit more cumbersome to drive quickly through the bends. But let's face it, you don't buy this car for that, do you? Another thing that's a bit annoying is that if you want to take control of the gears yourself, because you want to stop that howling noise of the engine and change it manually, it takes an age between pulling the paddle and the gear actually changing. Look at this, so pull, change, pull, change. <laughs> This plug-in hybrid version of the Kia Sorento is the quickest. Apparently it can do 0 to 60 in 8.4 seconds, but I'm gonna find out for myself using my specialist timing gear up here. Got it in sports mode, just floor the throttle, see what happens. Here we go. Ooh, a lot of noise from that engine. And the time is 8.08 .08 seconds. It's not bad, it's not bad at all. Finally, I'm gonna do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. See how quick it can stop when I do an emergency stop. Come on, it's a big car. And it's heavy, what did we do? Specialist Tommy Gear said it took 31 meters to stop from 60 miles an hour. So then what's my final verdict on the new Kia Sorento? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Sorento. It really is a good all round, quite posh feeling, seven seat SUV. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to Carway to change your car. Not only can you check offers out on the latest new cars, you can also sell your car through us as well. Just upload some photos and our dealers will bid on your car.